Cheers to everyone for watching. My name is Mitchell. You're watching the Stereo Picture Society, and this is a review of Stacey K's new album, 11 O'Clock Number. Stacey K is a singer, songwriter, and full time diva based in both London and Toronto, Ontario, but my homegirl is born and raised in Cambridge, Ontario, just like me. She released an EP in 2013 and has been releasing a couple of singles over the last couple of years, ultimately leading up to her first full length album, counting in at 14 tracks and 45 minutes. While I was in London around the same time that she was coming up, she had gained popularity from becoming a finalist in the season of America's Got Talent. Shout out to Mark Swan and Jill Sourtick for being part of her backing band for those performances. And she also came into attention from an acapella project that she was a part of, A440. And I was really excited to hear this album because I wanted to hear her insane vocal chops and also for a couple of other reasons too. First one is a shout out to my friend Josh Try who plays guitar on the album. And the second part was because I thought this would be a great opportunity to talk about how reviews are going to play out if I actually know the people that I'm reviewing. And I want to keep on mentioning this as I grow in subscribers and viewers, but making videos of album reviews and running the risk of criticizing and losing friends has been something that I've been thinking about for a while now. And I just want to get this out of the way. I really am passionate about music. I feel like putting my thought and energy into music criticism is something that shows that I really care about the music that I'm listening to and that I care about my opinions, and that I'm confident enough as a person to share them. I know that I'm going to run the risk of disappointing people, and even exciting people, but I know that I'm also just one person, whether it's negative or positive, and I'm helping people grow as musicians, or as a scene, helping them grow. I mean, that'll just make the scene grow, and that'll just give me so much pride. So that's pretty much why, no matter what, if it's negative or positive, I just want to see my friends succeed. And if I can offer my critical feedback towards them, and see them grow and grow as an artist, they'll make me so proud. It's just one part of a huge chunk that gives me a whole bunch of personal fulfillment from making these videos. We pretty much have a 45 second thing that's almost like a background sound for when Stacey comes up onto the stage. When the opening beat to Money starts, I just see her standing in this huge proud pose with like a shadow and you can just see her. And then she just comes in with this bang on chorus which is like, I need money. But as I was listening to this track, I was just imagining like drag queens being on stage and seeing their backlight as well. Seeing this male voice like leading them on to be this huge superstar. And that's pretty much what Stacey K wants to be for this album. The idea of being a superstar, a diva, and this mega performer fits really well with Stacey's persona as it fits really well into a performer of a drag queen or king. We see this later on in the track where there's this entire verse devoted to drag. Which, good for you girl, I'm glad we talk about how big of a fan we are of RuPaul's Drag Race, yeah. But this track is pretty much all that it sounds like. It's this huge glowing thing about her wanting money, her wanting the best, and this line about how she wants to keep on picking up those pennies for good luck. Following that track we have the third song, So Fresh, which has the same kind of production quality at first having a whole bunch of harmonized vocals on the center and left and right of the stereo picture. But during the bridge of this song, we have this ska breakdown, and I really felt like the vocals could have been taken down a notch and then added for a lot more percussion or horns to boost the instrumentation and give that huge ska feel, as opposed to just being a little bit lighter and having more of a gimmick towards it. Little did I know that this would be a precursor to a lot of my issues that I had with the album. For one, sometimes Stacey's vocals really take up a lot of what we're hearing, which is what we want from a pop song normally, but Stacey's voice and harmony blends well with a lot of instruments that are coming up in and out and not taking up a lot of space and giving her a lot of room to do her thing. The song New Type for me is a perfect example of that. The instrumentation really breathes and it has a lot of space for whatever Stacey wants to do with her vocal larry and her harmony. The song itself is all about representing a whole lot of people running together as a group in order to achieve your goals. Other than hearing those chances for vocal melody experimentation and jamming with it, other than that I didn't have any other problems with it and I really enjoyed the track. After these tracks we get a huge serving of club tracks. The song show you what I got probably being the biggest one on here. It features all these whooping synthesizers and pretty much club beats. You can hear it where it's just like 
And I understand that these are all party songs, but the songwriting really faltered for me on a lot of these. I get that it's supposed to be fun, but for me, a lot of these came off as too generic. At least for show you what I got, the club beat and the huge sound that it has really made up for any lyric gimmicks that it had. But also in this song, Stacy starts the trend of food lyrics for the album. Kind of going off of the whole body positivity thing that she's doing. She's making food be a gimmick for a lot of lyrics that are going on. By the time we get into the second third of the album with the track Legs, I kind of get woken up and startled by the production that comes in, but not in the best way. The chorus has this tonicization change where they go into E flat, and there's no transition from the verse to go up to that chorus. So there's kind of the space, and then all of a sudden, whoa, we're in a new key. The song itself isn't the best, but it also isn't the worst. And again, we have Stacy's food thing as the lyrics. But this time she really sells her body, and it kind of grows to me as if it's a gimmick. I know that I'm using the word gimmick a lot in this review, but because it's a pop and party thing, you do want to sell a lot of yourself and be this huge personality, and that's exactly what Stacy is doing. This again becomes a trend with the song Cookie Cutter right afterwards, how Stacy's just saying she's not your cookie cutter girl, living in your cookie cutter world. And it's this huge song that kind of has this drum beat that's like boo, ba, ba, boo, right? And you can imagine it in this guitar going like Wah. It's Stacy singing at the top of her lungs. It's this anthemic track, but I was just getting a little picky with it after listening to it so much. Just hearing that there was a lot of guitar as opposed to a whole lot more supporting it. I felt like the trombones that you can kind of hear behind her vocals could be brought forward a little bit more and the guitar just a little bit more back. This issue of guitars being at the forefront of the song kind of makes its way into the next one, Lock It Up, where it almost reminded me of the Katy Perry California Girls with the bass, but it's brought forward so much while it has all these fills that it's doing every four bars, and I think it's really taking away from Stacy's performance and distracting me from listening to it. I mean, normally for bass guitar, you're following along and I get if you're a really good bass player and you worship the bass, you want to hear as much of it as possible. But when you have a pop song, you want to be in the background and then like, come up. I just wish the bass was grooving more instead of doing its own thing. And all this comes to a head with the song 3, 2, 1, Go, which if you're thinking of a generic party song title, you can't get more closer to it than that. There are a lot of issues with this track for me, but there are also a lot of things going for it too that I can see why Stacey would want to have it on the album. For one, a relative of hers, Jimmy K, makes an appearance on here, spitting bars on the second verse. Stacy herself also spits a hell of a bar, like really, really, really fast, and it's kind of confusing, and again, also comes out as a gimmick. Stacy had already proved that she can rap really fast on Show You What I Got earlier in the track list. And when I heard that, I thought, oh, okay, yeah, she can rap really fast. That's good. But there was like no solid songwriting within that rap itself that made me stand out. It wasn't a punch in the face from the word itself. It was the speed at which she was going at. And that's kind of the case here. She takes up a lot of bars just to rap really fast and say that she can rap really fast, but that's just the point of it. She has a couple of tropes that she can go off of into her songwriting themes for this rap so that she can really land a one-two punch with a listener, like being positive about your body or working to make that money move. But instead, it's just barely comprehensible. With Jimmy K even saying, hey yo, I didn't even understand half of what you just said. Literally on the track itself, she has like two bars devoted to that. It just kind of turned off the song for me and it wasn't even something that was compelling of a song in the first place. I definitely feel like a couple of these tracks could have been taken off of the album. Just because we're half an hour in, and all we're getting is this club party vibe, with not enough room to breathe. Fortunately, we do get that though, with the song Started All Over Again, which is a duet featuring Yannick Allwood from the band After Funk. Shout out to After Funk, and also my boy Josh Try. I have zero complaints about this song. I love it, this is my favorite song from the album. And I don't just like it for the minimalism, but also because Stacy takes a shot at singing soul and comes off beautifully, and I wish that she just did that more in the album. To be honest, I wouldn't hear the last three tracks that came before started all over again in order to hear it. I would just maybe skip through it. But I think that just comes down to album organization. The track afterwards, Can't Have Me, also was one of my favorites from here. I really like the duality that Stacy has on the chorus. She kind of has these vocal order harmonized vocals coming in on both sides. It kind of sounds like an ex or someone that wants to like advance onto her. And then she just comes in the middle after all that being like, you can't have me. But I also think that if the bridge was any longer than it was, 
I probably would change my feelings for how I feel about the song. After this is a track that I don't know how it got into the album, but here it is and it's called I'm Not Adele. Stacey already released this as a single last year, and at first it starts off as hilarious, but then afterwards just gets kind of sad. The kind of sad where it's like you hear a joke for the second time and the third time and it just isn't funny anymore. She has this two-part hook that she sings three times throughout the song. And if you got an extra cookie, you better pass it to me. The only times that she references Adele is in the third verse just to say that she isn't. And can Adele do this? And can Adele do that? And you can just hear and kind of imagine that she's like pulling off this dance move. And then ends the track off with being like, but I love you, Adele. There's no melodies to catch on to here. The hook gets boring, and Adele isn't even being talked about on the song. And again, it's a club song, which for the 12th track on the album, it kind of has already been done before. Like, every threshold that has to be pushed for the album has already been pushed, and yet there's more party tracks that are being brought on. And then the last two tracks that end off the album are pretty good on their own. You got Weight on My Shoulders, which is a really full and bright track, which I think that if Stacy wasn't talking about getting all this dead weight off of her shoulders, metaphorically, it could easily just be a Christmas song, and I would still like it anyways. I will also say that this to me sounds like an ending track for the album. It ends really big, and 40 minutes have already gone by, and I'm like, okay. But the track that follows after it, Not Alright Without You, is also pretty good too. It's like if Stacy slowed down her tempo and then dubbed it just a little bit, into a bucket of Mariah Carey, she'd get this song. And again, this song is also a great example of a song that's kind of chilled out, but still has a good groove to it, and go real perfectly into the middle of an album. All in all, these songs aren't bad. I was really looking forward to the album, and I think that I got what I came for out of Stacey K. But the thing that concerns me with Stacey going into the future is that she's used up all the tricks that she has in her hat. We know that she can belt really high, we know that she's a diva, we know that she's elbow body positivity, and we know that she can rap really fast. I'm looking forward to how Stacey will grow in her songwriting, in her production, and the kind of songs that she chooses to write and perform on. And I hope that for the next time that I hear Stacey, that all these powerful points that come up, especially in the middle of this album, don't end up being the low points for me. Just because the party points on the album were already risen so much, and just made these tracks in comparison be kind of low points for me. Out of my handy dandy enjoyment chart, I'm giving it a solid happy face. I liked hearing Stacy sing, and would I put some songs on here for a party? Maybe. Go on and check some of Stacy K's songs out. Links are in the description. Be sure to like and subscribe. Again, cheers for watching the video, and I'll see you next time.